Hello friends, this is Barbara from Wigs and Fluff. Now today, I have on the Krista wig by Aesthetica in Honey Blonde with Light Ash Blonde. Now, this is a perfect example of a wig that kind of ages me. If you look at it, you'll see that you, I look a little older wearing this kind of a wig, even though it's a light colored blonde, and usually that's flattering for my skin tone, but, and it comes, it's got lots of height up in here, and it comes down low and covers my hairline, plus it sticks out a bit at the sides, which I think helps my face shape and all like that. It meets all my criteria, but the color is wrong. The color ages me because it's not exactly the right color for me. And it's all one color. So that's adding to making it look fakey and making me look rather old. It looks, I think this ages me, this particular um, hairstyle. This is the one that I chose that I think particularly doesn't look that great on me. So, um, sometimes we buy a new wig and it really doesn't do much for us. Um, even though we might think, oh, that one's going to look good on me. And then when we get it out, it's, we've chosen the wrong color. Now, we have a variety of colors that we can choose from, but we need to consider our face tone and what's going to look good. Too light a blonde on me doesn't always look good. It depends upon how it's blended. Um, and this one is just, it says that it is honey blonde with light ash blonde highlights, but um, it's, it just looks like it's all one color to me. So, I mean, it is a, a nice wig. <coughs> if you look at the back, it comes down nice and long. But I think that this wig ages me. It's not my style. It just doesn't have exactly the right look for me, although it meets, seems to meet most of my criteria. And it is a cute wig, but probably not for me. Um, it's not my style. And it actually makes me I think, look a little older. So choosing the wig for your face shape is real important, whether you have a heart shape or an oval or a round face like me. I mean, it doesn't matter what face shape you have. Lots of people in Hollywood have all kinds of different face shapes, from square to round to oval to heart, everything, the whole gamut. So lots of people look really good, but they choose carefully what style that they wear. And this one is just, it kind of ages me. I think it looks a little fakey because it seems to be all one color. Um, and it's, it's just, it isn't the right shade for me. Now, let me put on one other one, a different one. Now, this is an older wig, but this one, I think, looks good. This is the Voltage. Well, now I've lost my comb. I'll have to finger style it for the moment. Oh, here it is. I'll put it right underneath that wig. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> ah, okay. Make sure I get this on right. Now, you can see that this wig has different colors in it. It's not all one color. This is called glazed sand, but you can see there's darks and lights in it, and that is attractive, especially on me. It might not be attractive on somebody else, but with my skin tone, this color is a little bit better than this one. This one's all one color. This one has the dark highlights, and I think this one, I look better, I look younger, and um, 
it's a voltage. It really is. It's an older one. <clears throat> it really is about a year old. But the voltage comes down plenty long enough in the back. And I think the style is very, very attractive on me, especially going to one side like that, I think is always attractive. And I think it looks so much better than this one here, which is all one color. Can you see the difference? I mean, they're similar colors, but it's the fact that this one is just all basically one color. And this was more of a shag. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Maybe the shag doesn't look as good to me as one that's got a little bit longer, very a better cut, but the voltage is kind of a shag in the back anyway. So um, color is real important. So sometimes you get a wig and you think you've gotten the right wig and you think you've got a good color, but when you get it, it's not exactly the color that you need. So choose carefully what colors. This one really works. This one here is a glazed sand, like I said. It works for my complexion. We'll take that one off and put it back on its head. I think I'm gonna put the Krista on a head, just so I'll know. But I just don't think I look as good in the Krista as I do. Now this one here is the Soft Romance in Caramel. And you can see the difference immediately. Now this doesn't have all one color either. It's got lights and blondes in mixed in with this beautiful red color. So you can see the difference right there, how much better this looks compared to what this was. You can see the difference. This one makes me look, I think, a lot younger, a lot perkier, a lot uh, more in style. So it could be that this is just a poor style for me with the long in the back and the shaggy looking cut. It could be that. It's just a poor style choice for me. Even though it fits all my criteria, it's just not what looks good on me. Sometimes if your wig is too full, have you ever gotten one of those that are just really big? Um, that can age you as well. And an overly full wig can look fake and phony. So um, be careful about buying really, really full wigs. I know I have a tendency to want big wigs because I have no hair. And um, I have to be careful about that. I ha this one here has just about the right amount of hair. It really does, just about the right amount. Now I'm gonna take this one off and I'm gonna show you the difference between that one and this one right here, which is uh, the voltage and glazed fire. Look at that color. So, the reds are good on me, but sometimes I do love the glazed fire, even if it doesn't look the best on me. <laughs> I really do love that color. Oh, it's hard for me to give up certain reds sometimes, even though I know they may not be the best color in the world. Some people can carry off a beautiful red like this. I'm not sure I can, but this is a really cute wig and I really like it. But you can see the difference between this color here on me and this one. This one might be a bit too harsh on my coloring for me, but this one's a lot softer and it doesn't age me as much. So um, you have to be careful of full wigs. We were talking about that. They can look fake. Um, the good news is that you can use one of those razor combs. You can get those. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below in case you have a full wig that you are struggling with. And you can thin a full wig and make it not so big. 
So you can just use your razor comb and, and thin out some of it. So the wrong color can um, age you. And there are so many beautiful colors that you do, you do have to choose the right color. And I'm not sure this one is. I'm not sure that this one's the right color. You can see the difference when you put it on and you get the right color. Whoops, there it goes. For you. This one here, look at the difference. There I am again, looking younger. I think that that other red is a little bit too red for my complexion. But this one here fills the bill and it looks absolutely beautiful. And this is the Soft Romance by Eva Gabor. I think this is the prettiest looking wig that I have. And I think it makes me look the youngest and I get tons of compliments on this wig. Tons and tons of compliments. So that's my story for you today. And it's all about choosing the right wig for you and being careful that you don't age yourself by picking something that's not right for you. So face shape is important. Skin tone is important. So take all of those things into consideration. Do some research on the internet and figure out skin tones. What skin tone is right for which color? I might do a, um, a video just on skin tones and wig color one time. So I want to also talk to you about something else today, and that is hearing God's voice. Do you hear God's voice? Um, we hear it through the scriptures. When we read the word of God, we hear God's voice through the scriptures. The word of God is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword that's in the Bible. So we hear from reading our Bible on a daily basis, we hear the word of God. Um, secondly, we hear the voice of God through sermons on Sunday morning. When we go to church on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights, prayer meeting, whenever we sit before the pastor and we listen to the sermon that God has given him, then we hear the voice of the Lord and what he's trying to say to us as a people. Maybe not individually, but what he's trying to say to us as a people. Thirdly, he speaks to us in our quiet time when we're alone with the Lord. He speaks if you will sit and wait and listen. The trick is you have to learn, you have to learn over a period of time to discern the true voice of the Lord. You have to learn to do that. And the Bible says that the sheep hear his voice and know his voice. So when you hear it, you'll know it. And that is the voice of the Lord. And you have to be careful because there are other voices. And yes, we all hear voices. We're not crazy, but we all hear voices. Number one is the voice of the Lord. Number two is the voice of Satan trying to impersonate Jesus. I've had that happen to me. And thirdly is our own creative imagination. Sometimes we want to hear what we want to hear. So we have to be careful. We have to discern which is the true voice of Jesus. And it's just, it's just going before the Lord day after day after day after day, listening and asking him to speak to you, telling him how much you want to hear his voice, and he will speak to you. And that is important to tell God how much you want to hear his voice and what he wants to say to you. It's also important and I find helpful to listen to Christian music, some really beautiful, motivating Christian songs. Um, like the get what the kind the Gaithers put out. I love the Gaithers. And I use some of those uh, right before I pray and try to listen to the Lord every night. I do that at nighttime and I do it in the morning, two times a day, in the morning and at night. In the morning, I mostly pray. In the nighttime, I pray and listen. So if you listen to, to three, four, five songs 
and really worship the Lord and then sit down, read the Bible, sit down, pray, tell God what you need, tell God what the what you need and, and pray for other people around you and so forth and so on for the country, for the president and all like that. And then tell him what you need individually and then ask him to speak to you. And I guarantee you, he's going to do it. Talk to God every day and then ask him to speak to you and he's not going to disappoint you. He's not. The Bible tells us that he wants to speak to us. He wants to communicate to us. Sometimes people actually audibly hear his voice. I've had that happen a couple of times, just going through a doorway and suddenly I heard the voice of the Lord say something to me personally. It was a personal thing. So sometimes he does. Sometimes he gives visions and dreams to people. I've had visions on and off most of my life, one time or another. But I can't tell you that my visions are, you know, sometimes I have one 10 years ago that I might see happen the next day, 10 years from now, what have you. But the Lord does speak. If you genuine, genuinely want to hear him, he will speak. And he's not going to disappoint, especially in this day and age. So... That's my story for today, and I have one other thing I want to talk to you about, and that is that um, Sierra Sage, Sierra Sage is the winner of the Sierra <laughs> wig. I didn't pick that up on purpose, it's just the way it turned out. The Sierra wig in Strawberry Swirl, Sierra Sage, you won it. Congratulations. You've won the wig. Now, you need to get in touch with me through my email, which I'll leave in the description box below. And you need to tell me your address so I can send it to you. So, Sierra Sage, you've won the Sierra wig. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.